Welcome to Cognitive Spirals, exploring the latest research into consciousness, cognition, and machine intelligence. All right, everyone, exciting week in AI again, it seems. Today, we're diving into deep seek math, which has been making quite a splash recently. Oh, yeah, I've been following that one pretty closely. I think it's a really interesting example of just how far we can push deep learning with the right kind of data. It's pretty impressive what they've achieved, particularly in terms of mathematical reasoning. I'm not so sure about that. Impressive is a bit strong. I mean, it's solving math problems using massive amounts of data. It feels more like brute force than true understanding. Is it really reasoning or just pattern matching on steroids? Exactly my thoughts. The thing that concerns me is this idea that just throwing more data at the problem is going to get us to AGI. I feel like it's just masking fundamental limitations with the core algorithms. Deep seek math success seems to reinforce this very point. Sure, it can solve equations, but does it understand the underlying concepts or just correlations in the training set? Okay, okay, so we have differing opinions right out the gate, which is great. Let's break down deep seek math first. For those who haven't been following it, it's a project focusing on training deep learning models to handle complex math problems. It's using a gigantic data set of mathematical problems, right? From simple arithmetic to high-level calculus and even formal proofs. Yes, and they're not just solving the problems. They're also demonstrating the steps involved in arriving at the answer. This shows that it's not just a matter of memorizing the input-output pairs. They're actually learning some kind of problem-solving approach. It's fascinating how the models can generalize from the training set, even to problems they haven't explicitly seen before. I'm still skeptical, though. What does generalization even mean in this context? It's not like a human learning math. We grasp underlying principles. This model probably hasn't grasped the why, it's just seen enough examples to map the what. It's essentially curve fitting, albeit on a very complex curve with an enormous data set. Yes, and that's exactly where I think the current hype is misplaced. We are basically extrapolating from impressive pattern recognition to something resembling true understanding, but that's not the same thing. For instance, does deep seek math understand the underlying axioms of group theory when it solves a problem, or has it just found patterns that work? Right, so this brings up a crucial point, doesn't it? It highlights the different philosophies we have. Some of us, myself included, are more interested in drawing on neuroscience for solutions. Understanding the brain's actual mechanisms for mathematical reasoning could give us a more robust path to true AGI. I mean, how does the prefrontal cortex handle complex calculations? That's not something deep seek math is even attempting to emulate. Okay, but hold on a second. I think you might be missing the point. We don't need to replicate the exact biological mechanisms of the brain to achieve AGI. Deep learning is demonstrating that it can achieve amazing results with a very different architecture from a biological brain. And with the sheer scale of the data sets, we are getting closer to a different way of thinking about learning itself. The point is, by analyzing how different mathematical structures map to different deep learning architectures, we can start to uncover the fundamental principles that underlie what we consider intelligence. It's all about pattern extraction from a massive amount of data. But what if those underlying principles require symbolic representation and manipulation, not just deep learning? I mean, you can train a network to recognize a cat in an image, but can it understand what a cat is? in terms of its properties and its relationship to other things. Deep learning is amazing at the pattern recognition part, but what about true abstraction and logical inference? Exactly. It's about the abstraction. For instance, if we were to map the neural circuits involved in spatial reasoning using neuroimaging techniques, we might have a framework for creating architectures that aren't simply pattern matching. This is beyond throwing more data at the problem. I completely agree. It's like we're trying to build a bridge by just piling up rocks, sure. You might eventually get something that resembles a bridge, but it lacks structural integrity. Deep learning is essentially doing this with data. We need a framework that explicitly represents the underlying principles of space and time. I mean, consider a mathematical equation with time as a factor, for instance. Deep learning seems to operate as if time and space are just another parameter to adjust. There's no inherent understanding that time flows or that space is structured. It's all just flattened into a huge vector. But that's where I think you're wrong. What if the apparent lack of spatiotemporal understanding is simply a matter of not using the right data structures and not training the models in an environment? With real spatiotemporal dynamics, we have models showing impressive capabilities in simulated physics and even robotic control. These show that deep learning can and is learning about time and space if given the right conditions. It's not just flat vectors. The internal representations the models form are more complex than that. It's just a matter of extracting the understanding from the trained networks. That's hard and a hot area of current research. I think you're overestimating what they actually understand in those cases. They have learned to mimic. 
They haven't grasped the underlying physics in the way a human does. The model learns to predict based on experience, and while the how is impressive, the why is lacking. It's like, can it explain why something falls downwards? It just knows that it does. We need symbolic systems that represent this underlying causal structure for true reasoning, not just correlation and pattern recognition. That's it exactly. And we aren't even talking about more complex spatio-temporal representations. How could current deep learning architectures ever truly grasp higher dimensional space, which seems so critical to the underlying framework of many things, like in physics, for instance? How can we expect the model to translate between different coordinate representations without an explicit structure for doing so? Current deep learning is brute forcing its way through each individual coordinate system. So, let's zoom back to deep seek math for a second. I get the skepticism on the understanding part, absolutely. But from a neuroscience-inspired perspective, could we perhaps use it as a tool to test our hypotheses about how the brain performs mathematical reasoning? I mean, if we know which neural circuits are engaged during specific math problem-solving tasks, and we design a network that's emulating that, could we then test the deep-seek math model against this to see if it's actually doing something similar to the brain? Yes, and we could use it as a kind of ablation study. See what happens if we remove certain parts of the deep-seek math model. Do they correlate to areas of the brain known to be critical for mathematical reasoning? I mean, we can do similar things on a theoretical level with symbolic reasoning, but deep learning gives us something more akin to what happens in the brain at the network level. That would be a novel approach. That's an interesting approach. It might help us at least understand the limitations of these models. But ultimately, we need models that can translate the representation of a problem from, say, a symbolic representation into a spatio-temporal representation, or vice versa. Deep learning, at its current state, it cannot. It's just learning a map between the input and output in the same coordinate representation. That's why you get the kind of catastrophic forgetting or lack of transfer we see so often. Right, and that brings up the transfer learning problem. Deep seek math is great at math, but can it transfer that knowledge to, say, a physics problem that requires mathematical reasoning? If we could figure out how the brain encodes these abstract representations of math, we could build models that are more generalizable. And this is where we can move beyond just using massive data sets and start to build intelligent models in a more efficient way. Okay, so I think that we should maybe acknowledge that while current deep learning models, like the one used in deep seek math, may not have the same kind of understanding a human has, they are achieving impressive results in mathematical problem solving, and that is a real feat of computational power and data. We should use deep seek math and similar approaches to further our research, not just dismiss it. Maybe AGI doesn't require a symbolic engine at all. Maybe it can emerge from a sufficiently powerful learning model given the right data structure and training environment. Yes, and I think that research in neurosymbolic approaches can benefit from large language models and the impressive feats of deep learning. Maybe we can use them to generate potential candidates for symbolic rules that we can then evaluate or prune using symbolic reasoning. The idea is not that it is either deep learning or symbolic reasoning, but rather it can be integrated to potentially get the best of both worlds. And while doing that, it is critical to look at spatiotemporal frameworks. I think it's important to investigate frameworks that inherently capture the underlying structure of the world. If we don't understand how the brain represents space and time, I don't think we'll get anywhere close to true AGI. I keep thinking about these mathematical structures, such as lie groups and differential geometry, as potential alternatives to the graph-like structures that deep learning currently uses. These structures offer some inherent spatiotemporal context, and this is something we are missing now. We need models that translate between different coordinate representations. That's the key. Okay, so if we're thinking about future research directions, let's try to synthesize all of these ideas. From my perspective, it's about using neuroimaging techniques to create a map of the brain's neural structures during mathematical tasks. We could then use this map to design AI architectures that are inspired by these brain structures rather than brute force pattern matching. The whole idea of testing the deep seek math system against these brain-inspired models as well, to see if it is emulating or matching what the brain does. It's about the why behind mathematical ability, not just the what. Right, and I think a crucial avenue is to investigate how different mathematical structures, from the simplest arithmetic to complex group theory, map onto different types of deep learning models. Can we create architectures that are specifically good at solving problems related to a specific type of mathematics? And I am still convinced that scaling up the data set and the model architecture is a key to unlocking a real potential for AGI. Yes, and from my standpoint, it's about hybrid approaches. I think neurosymbolic models could hold the key. We need to explore how to integrate symbolic representations with the power of deep learning to handle both the pattern recognition and the abstraction.
aspect of intelligence, I think a good start will be to generate these symbolic candidate rules using deep learning models, then prune and evaluate them using symbolic reasoning techniques. And I think the next big step is to focus on building models that explicitly deal with space and time. We should be actively researching mathematical structures that inherently have spatiotemporal properties and ways in which we can make AI models translate information between these different coordinate representations. That, to me, is the fundamental problem we're facing. Deep learning needs an upgrade, a more fundamental change to allow for true understanding, especially with the addition of time. This is great. It seems that we're all advocating for research in a variety of directions that may or may not have synergy, but at least we know where we stand. It's about integrating neuroscience, symbolic reasoning, better data structures and spatiotemporal awareness into the next generation of AI, and to also try and use tools like DeepSeek Math to test our hypotheses in that regard. I think it's a good start. Yeah, I think so too. It's clear that it isn't going to be one solution, but a combination of approaches. And DeepSeek Math serves as a good tool to drive further innovation in both deep learning and our understanding of biological intelligence. Right, and we should try to be more aware of the limitations of current deep learning and think about hybrid and alternative algorithms that can help us achieve true understanding, not just correlation. Absolutely, and it's time we move past the brute force and try to find a more elegant and fundamental principle. Spatiotemporal understanding, the ability to transform across multiple coordinates, is key to unlocking true AGI. We must look past current deep learning limitations. Thanks for tuning into Cognitive Spirals this week. It was another great discussion and another step closer to understanding consciousness, cognition, and machine intelligence. Until next time.